KPSM has another installment of our ongoing investigation into police encounter deaths with the use of less lethal force. And tonight we present Dying for Answers, Ray's story. Thank you for choosing KTSM 9 News at 6. I'm Estela Casas. And I'm Monica Cortez. This video was gathered by the Associated Press for an investigation into deadly police encounters. The footage from the University of Texas at El Paso shows what restraint was used to detain a naked man who later died. Our KTSM 9 News reporter Carla Draxler has this investigative report. We do want to warn you that some of the images you are about to see could be disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. No, please don't do this to me. Don't kill me like this. Over 1,000 people across the country died in the past decade during encounters with law enforcement. You're not going to die, just relax. With officers using less lethal force, such as a stun gun or different restraint techniques. We brought you the story of Daniel Diaz in September. And they struck him in the head in the torso. He died after an encounter with El Paso police being tased and beaten by seven police officers back in 2021. And now, thanks to Associated Press investigation into those types of deaths, we bring you the story of Ray Lara. You can hear the gentleman screaming further south down Mesa. July 28th, 2020, just after 3.30 a.m., Utah police responds to call of a naked man running down Mesa Street. Like, literally stripped naked and ran after my car. Woman told the officer the man looked distressed. He just kept saying they're going to kill me. And tried to get in her car. Was he already naked when he got up to you? Or? Uh, yeah. Okay. Like, About 10 minutes later, Lara approaches the officer at a parking right lot on Mesa, right, right across from Utah right Police there. Headquarters. Stay right there. Stay on my Stay, Stay, right. Stay right there. Yes, Stay right there. Running and saying someone was chasing him, Lara is completely naked. Get on the floor. Visibly in distress, UTEP officers claim he was not listening to their orders. Taser, taser. Ah, ah yeah, that's it. I listen. Listen. Officers handcuff Lara on the ground yes, I I and carry him to the vehicle. Relax, 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 relax. Keep moving, keep moving. Inside the car. No, 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 no. No? Okay. No, 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 no. Get okay. on the ground. Sit down. Sit down. Just sit down. Just sit down right here, man. Officers put Lara back on his stomach. Kill me. Ow, sorry. After minutes of struggle. Ow. No, please don't do this to me. Don't kill me like this. Please, I'm sorry. You're not going to die. Ah. Just relax. Lara is unresponsive. Looks like he's calm down. Ambulance arrives and gives CPR, but to no avail. Lara was pronounced dead at the hospital. Autopsy report obtained by KTSM shows cause of death, acute methamphetamine toxicity, with a contributing condition, physiological stress associated with physical restraint. Methamphetamine combined with the intervention of his interaction with police officers caused the adrenaline rush, the, the excited situation that resulted in his death. I don't necessarily see that there's anything criminal aside. He, I mean, he's under the, the influence. If there's anything that comes up, would you want to press charges if there is like a, a crime? No? Okay. In obtaining the full report and camera footage of the incident, Associated Press was met with pushback from the university. Utah wrote to Texas Attorney General's office saying they did not have to release the information to AP journalists. We know this is not the full report. Just like Daniel Diaz's family, who needed a court order to get video and documents, AG's office ultimately decided that UTEP didn't have to release specifics on their investigation into the officer's conduct, but revealing in their response to UTEP that there were, quote, substantiated allegations. When KTSM asked about any misconduct or changes in policy after the incident, we were sent a short statement from UTEP officials saying the university police department follows standard protocols, no policy or procedure changes were made. The release documents also showed a discrepancy. In the incident report for the AG's office, there is no mention of officers holding a knee to Lara's back, while the Texas Rangers investigation shows otherwise. So who makes the decision if the officers are prosecuted in these types of deaths? The case against the person who assaulted the officer is going to go to one set of prosecutors and then the case against the officer is going to go to a different, office, a different prosecutor so that we can as much as possible not have, you know, the bias of, hey, we got to go get the bad guy and forgive the, the good guy. El Paso District Attorney Bill Hicks says the ultimate decision falls on the people of El Paso. If the assaultive conduct of the officer 
has resulted in harm to a citizen, then they review the case, make sure they have all the information they need, and then they take that case to a grand jury. In the case of Ray Lara, former DA Ivon Rosales, who was in office at the time, did not prosecute the UTEP officers. According to AP's investigation, police rely on tactics such as physical holds, blows, and tasers to restrain, but if misused, those can turn deadly. They were just simply holding the person still, and it wasn't that they had him in a neck hold, they were, weren't restricting his breathing, they weren't doing anything other than trying to hold him still. Suppression of information, lack of reports from local law enforcement are all the issues that AP report states are clouding the overall numbers of people who have died during encounters with police, those that were not supposed to be lethal. We certainly will prosecute anyone who violates the law. None of the seven El Paso police officers in Daniel Diaz's case face consequences, and the fate of the two UTEP officers is unknown. And our thanks to our caller Draxler and investigative director Andrew Litton for that report. This special report was a continuation of our investigative series, Dying for Answers. And if you would like to read more on our Dying for Answers investigations, you can visit our website, ktsm.com.